everybody. It's been a little while, but I recently got my hands on this Dell 97 watt hour lithium ion laptop battery. With a manufactured date of October 2014. Um, this come out of a laptop from work, and <clears throat> what's going on with it is it, the laptop refuses to charge it. Um, it claims that the battery is, is, I mean, you can run diagnostics and it'll tell you that the battery needs replacement, blah, blah, blah. I think maybe this battery might have been discharged in the laptop to, you know, a low percentage, and then perhaps the battery may have set for a while. What I mean by that is perhaps the battery cells might be a little too low for the charger to accept charging them. But what's nice about this is it's an A700 mAh pack and it's a 9 cell. So um, I think that I think that um, equates to 2900 mAh per cell, which is uh, incredible. So if these cells are actually in good condition, that'd be a nice upgrade to have. Um, these are LG Kim. It says somewhere on the pack, I can't remember where. But cells made in Korea. So that tells you they're either Samsung or LG Chem. LG Chem, it says right there on the pack. Um, let me get you a close look at that. Come on, where's that? There it is. LG Chem. And I already had a little peek at the sales. Um, they're pink. <laughs> they're pink. So anyways, let's go and get started. I'm thinking this pack will be relatively easy to get into. Because it looks like with just a little bit of effort from a flathead screwdriver, getting in there should not be too much of a challenge. And believe me, I like it when these packs are not hard to get into. So let's see what we can do here. Yeah, just the way this thing feels, it feels like it wouldn't be too hard to get into. Okay, well, at some point in the video, the camera decided to go dead, and this reminds me of why I need to convert it over to running off of these. Crappy old nickel metal hydride cells have been sitting. Um, I charged them, and they were sitting in my ready-to-go bin, and I put them in a camera, and I get 25 minutes out of them. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, 
This pack, although it wasn't on a difficult to get into, I mean, it was it was a little challenging, but the big thing about this pack is it's just aggravating the way it's designed. Um, the circuit board runs along the entire perimeter of the pack, as you may see. It makes a full run around the entire you know, length of the pack. Um, which made things a little bit more challenging in regards to getting these things, you know, getting these cells and the circuit board out of that, you know, thin but aggravating plastic casing without shorting anything out. Um, so these are LGABD11865 cells. Pink cells. <laughs> yeah, just as pink as stuff you see on Barbie. I mean, yeah, they're that pink. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, now we got them out at least. Now let's go ahead and measure the voltage of them to see how they're doing. Okay, the entire pack voltage is... Seven point five. Yeah, that's a little bit low. These three are 3.78, those are good. These three, 3.79, but these three, completely dead. Wow, that's interesting. These are at 3.78, again. These, 3.79, but these, Point zero eight. That's weird. I'm gonna call it that. Perhaps one of these three went bad and took the other two with it. Hmm, interesting. Well, to say to, you know, to say the least, we have <clears throat> we have six cells that are you know, still good. They're at three point seven eight. So we're good you know we got we at least got six good cells out of this pack so I'm pretty impressed six you know high capacity cells but I still do wonder what was the problem <laughs> with these three over here on the end get these things to get these things to break apart here Come on. Come on. All right, so those three are presumably bad. Now, I know some of you guys could be like, oh, you could recover them. But, to be honest with you, I've recovered cells like that before, and in the case of the cells did charge back up, they weren't charging up near their capacity. And that's when they were like drained down to like, like 1.6 or 1.8 volts. Those are at 0 0.08, so they're, they're FUBAR. I don't think there's any chance with them. Which is unfortunate, but these other six are still good. At least they're reading a good voltage any anyway. What trying to do here is trying to get this thing here to break. And not tear up the um, saving on cells in the process. Yeah, I've seen these. Um, I've seen these Dell packs before on the internet. People taking them apart, and I was already aware of what I was getting into with this thing. Um, 
it wasn't it's not it's not real difficult it's just it's more aggravating than it is anything um, just the way that they're designed now if you were to ask me on how what I think about this pack in regards to how well is it built it's not terribly built by any means um, but I've seen better one big complaint I had with the generic you know, the generic pack that those purple cells came out of was the fact that there was no sort of sleeving on top of the cells to protect them from shorting this does not have it um, so if there's any nick in the um, in the cell wrapping and this arcs you know this just touches over to negative you have a dead short alrighty so I'm going to go ahead and extract these six cells Now, if you're curious what I think about these LG Chem cells, um, I've had pretty decent luck with them. Um, the very first ones I ever extracted out of an older HP pack from like 2009, I guess, I guess it was. Um, I did have some go bad. Well, two that were, two of them um, immediately were showing signs of problems because they were getting hot on the charger, while another one. Just lost its capacity. It wouldn't. It, it was like down to less than a thousand milliamp hours. But so far, I think there's there was six in the pack. Two already bad leaves me with four, and had the other one go bad, so that leaves me with three others that I've been using in my flashlights and such. Now near the end of the video I will look up online so I can find additional info on these particular cells. At least right now from what I know they're like 2900 milliamp hour cells. And thankfully Dell or whoever manufactured this pack did not overdo it with um, with glue and stuff like that. This glue is peeling off here quite easily. So, pretty glad there. There's one. Let's see, for example. I'll measure the voltage of it. Yeah, 3.79. Not too bad. So these are 2014 cells, so they're only. Where was the original sleeving? Here we are. October of 2014, so they're just they're just a little over two years old. Uh, maybe about, you know roughly about two and a half years old. That's not too bad. I still wonder what caused those other three to fail the way that they did. Whether it was an issue with the circuit board or if it was actually a cell issue. Not really sure about that. That's you know, kind of a strange one.
Okay, everybody, I have all six cells loose now. All six of the good cells. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to charge them up in the charger and then run some discharge tests on, tests on to see how much capacity they have. Okay, doing a quick Google search shows that these are actually 3,000 milliamp hour batteries, which is, I think, excellent. So they sell, looks like they sell for about $5 a piece. So if these are in good condition, that'd be awesome. Now, here it shows battery maximum voltage 4.35. That's interesting. So I may have to do something special with the charger to get to be able to charge these. Okay, on this eBay listing, I'm seeing, let's see, which I don't think this is legit because it says over charge volt protection, over discharge volt protection. These are unprotected cells. They don't have over voltage and under voltage protection on them. Okay, everybody, I have these cells charging. I have four charging in the charger. Um, what's special about these cells is after I looked them up, um, and I got you the specs on them now, these are 3,000 milliamp hour cells. That's what they're rated for. Rated for 3,000 milliamp hours, minimum 2,900. 4.35 volt maximum voltage, rather than your typical 4.2 volts. Which is why you see the little warning flag in front of my charger, because I have just modified the charger. All I done was I just drilled a hole in the bottom casing to get access to the hidden voltage selection switch that allows you to select between 4.2, 4.35, and 3.7 maximum charging voltage. So I'm letting these charge up, and once they're fully charged up, we'll do a capacity test on them and see how they do. Okay, everybody, the batteries are now charging up in the charger. I'm going to end this video here, and I will continue this series in another video where I'll be testing out the capacity on these cells to see how much they hold. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, thanks for watching. Hey everybody, I sure hope you guys enjoyed this video from Q Computer Channel. Remember to like the video, subscribe to Q Computer Channel for more updates, and remember to tick the bell so that we actually get notified of these updates. Did you know that I am also on a second channel? That's CubeComp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos of bicycling, weather, elevators, and all sorts of other neat and interesting stuff. Feel free to subscribe to that channel as well. And again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.